on revival part four. Somebody say revival part four. And uh, Pastor Mark uh, Van Gundy did an, a phenomenal job, didn't he? Last uh, Sunday with the flow of the Spirit of God. And it was just incredible. Amen. And we're just going to continue to flow in that vein. And in just about 20, 30 minutes, Celeste, I want you to start playing the miracle chords. Amen. So let's lift our hands and say revival, part four. And the reason I want to be a little shorter today is I want to start praying for some miracles. There's, I feel gifts of the Spirit are flowing. You know, the Apostle Paul said, he said, I long to come to you that I might impart some spiritual gift. You know, through the laying on of hands, there's an impartation. There are, come on, say after me, there are miracles. There are uh, breakthroughs. There are gifts. You know, there are, there are I mean, I, we, I am a gift to the body of Christ. I am the gift. And the, the word uh, uh, charismata means gifts. So the Holy Spirit gifts men and women in the body of Christ. If we study Ephesians 4, we find out right there that God has gifted men and women in the church to the body of Christ. You too, lift your hands and say, I am a gift. And Father, say, let the charismata anointing of the Holy Ghost release the charismata gifts in me to heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out devils, uh, uh, let the blind eyes open, cripples walk, let stadiums fill up, churches fill up, let the glory of Christ be revealed through me and out of me as a gift to my community and my nation in Jesus' name. That's revival. You see, revival is when you're living every second of your life for Jesus and for others. Amen. And it's not just a church service. It's I can't wait for Monday to start flowing in revival. And Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday. And you know what? There's a supernatural energy by the Holy Ghost to live in revival. That's why you've got you to get healthy in revival. Say so get healed and get healthy. You've got you to you be healthy because you know what? God wants you, say after me, wealthy and healthy to carry it. We are containers and carriers of revival. Now, I want to read a passage of Scripture just to verify and to endorse what I've been saying about the right heart. So we're going to go, first of all, to Mark chapter 14, and we're going to read. After two days was the feast of the Passover of unleavened bread with the chief priests. But they said, not on the feast, lest there be an uproar. And being in Bethany, the house of Simon the leper, he sat at meat. And there came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment of spikenard, very precious. And she broke the box and poured it on his head. And there were some that had indignation within themselves and said, Why was the waste of this ointment made? For it might have been sold for more than 300 pence and given to the poor. And they murmured against her. And Jesus said, let her alone. She's done a good work on me. You got the poor with you always. And whenever you can, you can do good to them. But you don't have me always. She has done what she could. Amen. Amen. And she has come aforehand, notice what Jesus says here, to anoint my body for the burial. So the woman broke the spike knot, but Jesus said, she's anointed me for burial. So he, I mean, the woman didn't even realize what she was doing, but but to suffer everything, just like John the Baptist, when, when Jesus came in the Jordan, John the Baptist said, I don't want to do this. And Jesus said, do it to fulfill all righteousness. Could you imagine baptizing Jesus? Man, talk about being nervous. I'd say, no, you baptize. I'd be like John. John's, Jesus said, do it. Now, the woman anointed Jesus before the crucifixion for burial. Think about that. Forever, this woman who was a, a prostitute is remembered for what she did. Wow, what an amazing, what an amazing, amazing, amazing woman. That the whole of eternity and history will be, will be remembered for the, her heart and her offering. And I want you to lift your hands right now and say in Revival Part 4, I got to have the right heart and the right offering of my life to see 
what God wants to see through me. Lift your hands again and say, Lord, let the fame of your name go out through me to the nations. Let the fame of your love go out through me to the nations. Say it again. Say, Lord, let the fame of Jesus go out through my life, in my time, my treasure, my talent, to everybody I see in Jesus' mighty name. And Jesus said, wherever the gospel is preached in the whole world, what she has done will be spoken of as a memorial. Hallelujah, Pastor Karina. Come on, give the Lord a mighty hand for that. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. This woman poured out on the head of Jesus from the top of his head to the soles of his feet the anointing of spikenard, which was very expensive. And the religious people got upset. Hypocrites, come on, say holy hypocrites, holy hypocrites. They got upset, but Jesus actually liked it. Which gives an indication of the heart of God. God, come on everybody, say God loves expansive, extravagant, over-the-top expression of love, of generosity, of giving, not just to God and to the feet of Jesus, but to one another. There's nothing in the heart of God that is stingy or miserly. The Bible says God so loved the world that he gave. Come on, say God so loved the world that he gave. God so loved the world that he gave. Come on, say gave. 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 You see, everything God's given us is about giving. Say giving for living. What do you do? Give your, give your time and start living. Give your talent and start living. Give your treasure and start living. Give your love and start living. Give it away and you get more. Amen. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. 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 That's the heart of revival. Now, the Bible says that when you have a revival, it changes everything. Amen. What kind of a heart does Jesus have? In Matthew 9, 11, the Bible tells us that Jesus is the friend of sinners. How about that? Come on, lift up your hands right now and say, Lord, do people hate me as a Christian or am I a friend of sinners? You know what? My wife can testify wherever I go, some of the most scary people on planet Earth, they like me. Is that true, darling? I mean, in Mexico one time, we're standing in a, in, a, in a line and there's these Mexican bandits and they're talking to me. And, and, and then my wife, I could see she was looking and they were pretty dodgy looking characters. Then they say to her in Spanish, what's up with your husband? How come he's talking in a, in a posh Mexican accent? <laughs> and she said, he's not Mexican. And they said, come on, you're kidding me. Of course he's Mexican. Can I get an amen? amen. They said, he's got a funny accent. I said, no, he's, he's British. They were laughing. But the fact of the matter is, is they, these were pretty frightening looking guys, but they were my friends. Come on now, I want you to lift your hands and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, if my Christianity has brought me to a point that sinners can't, can't connect with me or I can't connect with, with them, then I'm not in revival. Say, the, the, the fruit of revival is the fact that I can speak to prostitutes, drug addicts, drug dealers, gang members, widows, orphans, intellectuals, agnostics, atheists, Buddhists, Baptists, anybody, and still release the love of Jesus to them in Jesus' name. Can I get an amen? Can I get an amen? Can I get an amen? The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 9, 16, that we've got to become all things to all men to do what? To win some. I'm going to ask you a question. Are you prepared to abandon everything that might cause you to have a religious spirit in order to get a revival spirit? Who says amen? amen. Because you know what? If you don't, you can sit for years in a church and never do anything. I want you to know Isaiah chapter 54 verse 18 Put it up on the board right there. I want you to know, revival breaks the curse of barrenness. Come on, say revival breaks the curse of barrenness. Say revival breaks the curse of barrenness. Say it again, revival 
breaks the curse of barrenness. You see, I mean, you see, revival is bringing something back from the dead, but actually, we need something more than revival. We need an awakening. Isaiah fifty four eighteen. Have we got that? We haven't. Can somebody read it out for me? Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. Can I have it loud and clear in Jesus' name? Isaiah 54, 18. Sing, O barren. Or verse 1. Sing, O barren, you that have not born, break forth into singing. Cry aloud. You who have not labored with child. Cry aloud. Can I get an amen? For the children of the desolate are more than the children of the married woman, says the Lord. So I want you to lift your hands and say, barrenness is a curse. Everybody lift your hands and watch it on the broadcast. Say, the curse of barrenness must be broken off the church today. Because when the church is barren, she's, there's no revival. Then what happens to the barren church? The barren church becomes a denomination. Every church that is not healing the sick, raising the dead, casting out devils, around the clock, is going to die. Can I get an amen? Let me ask you a question again as we pray. I'm watching on the broadcast. Everybody lift your hands. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm prepared to abandon all systems, all programs, all psychology, all self-help motivating uh, thoughts and, and teachings. I'm prepared to abandon it all to get a daily pattern in my life of anointing by Jesus Christ, to live in the overflow of the power of God like Acts 2.42, like the book of Acts church, daily, house to house, daily in the marketplace, daily preaching the gospel, daily healing the sick, daily raising the dead, around the clock until Jesus comes. This is what I live for. Give the Lord a hand in Jesus' mighty name. Now quickly, in Isaiah... 4222, the Bible says these words, cry out, restore. It says, my people are locked in prison houses. Cry out, restore. That can be the local church. Why? Because the local church can end up, instead of being a place where, where, the, where the fire and the glory of God is moving, what happens is it just becomes a dead religious denomination. How many of you know, say, we don't want that. Say, not at OCC. And so what, what we need is to understand that God wants to birth something powerful through you and me to win the lost. Amen. Everybody say, build the church, reach the lost. Build the church, reach the lost. Build the church, reach the lost. Now, here's five things that I want you to understand, five conditions that we see in history as we're looking at revivals. This is, these, are, these five conditions, you can look anywhere in history, and when these five conditions existed, God knew it was time to birth a revival. I want you to lift your hands and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, would you put your hand upon me today and make me a consecrated man, a consecrated woman. I'm not too old. I'm not too young. I, I, I'm, it's not too late. I haven't sinned so much that God can't still use me. I, I confess sin. I repent of it, and I get back under grace. But I pray, Lord, make me today. I'm watching all around the world. Make me a revivalist. Make me a revival man, a revival woman in Jesus' name because the days are evil. Evil. Amen. And in, and in Isaiah 520, the Bible says, when a generation starts calling good evil and evil good, you know it's time for revival. Now, here are the five conditions. Number one, revivals throughout history. And I've studied revivals because that's my heart. I'm a revivalist. I'm not just a pastor. Can I get that? I am a revivalist. I carry revival. I take revival. How many of you can see that? I'm not just a pastor. I'm a revivalist. There's a big difference. Now, we, we thank God for pastors, but many pastors are not revivalists. That's why they need to invite a revivalist into their church to get a revival happening again. Because revivalists have an anointing for the lost to turn the church out so that an awakening starts to blanket an entire city. Now, that'll tell you that revivalists, are not, there's, not, there's not millions of them. They're quite rare, but they're needed by God because they're, they're, the Apostle Paul was a, re, a revivalist. George Whitfield was a revivalist. Charles Finney was a revivalist. Evan Roberts was a revivalist. Modern day times, you would say Reinhard Bonnke is a revivalist. Now, lift up your hands and say, Lord, put me in there. I've, I, I want to be one of those. 
in the mighty name. And you can be. It's all about desire. The Bible says what you desire, pray and you shall receive it. When I got born again, I, I, I watched the whole thing and I thought, you know what? I, I'd like to be a pastor, but I really want to be a revivalist. Anybody else? Gabrielle, lift your hand and say, Lord, I want to be a revivalist. I don't just want to sit in church. I want to open blind eyes. I want to see the sick healed. I want to see people saved around the clock. Amen, amen Holy May. Amen. amen. Come on, say amen, somebody. So number one, revivals have always occurred when there's been times of deep darkness over the nations. Right now, over Europe, America, the Middle East, there's darkness. Who can see darkness? Darkness in the media. Darkness in the music. Darkness in the movies. I mean, the movies they're making for kids these days, I cannot believe how dark they are. The music, I can't believe how dark it is. The media, I can't believe how dark it is. I mean, you know, it's, it, it, it's, it's getting more depraved by the day. Who can say amen to that? Now, if we're going to focus upon that, we're all going to start getting sad. But here's an encouraging thing because I'm going to show you what can happen. Okay, that's the first thing. The second thing is when a revival has started, it always started upon a consecrated individual. Come on, say consecrated individual. The Bible says in Ezekiel, he says, I sought for a man among them uh, who would stand in the gap, but I couldn't find anyone. Ezekiel 22, 30. Now lift your hands and watch it and say, Father God, I want to be that consecrated individual. Now lift, put your, lift your hand and say, Lord, I want to be a revivalist. I want to be one who would stand in the gap. I, I really do. You know what? In my life and in your life, say amen. In your life and in my, I don't want to live for anything else. What else can you live for? When you get to be about my age, you know, pushing towards 60 in a little bit of time, but to don't tell Pastor Karina, you know, what else do you want to live for? What else do you want to live for? I mean, what else can you live for? Think of all the things people live for. Simon and Marlowe, think of all the things people live for. Oh, they live for their boat. They live for their yacht. They live for their holiday. They live for their holiday home. So what? Uh, they live for their car. They live for their body. They live, they live for retirement. They live for a cappuccino. All the things you could live for. So what? If you had all the money in the world, so what? If you, had all, if you, if you were a billionaire, so what? If you owned a boat, so what? If you owned a house, so what? You know, of all the things you could live for, join me now and say, Father God, there's only one thing I want to live for. So I want to live for Jesus. I want to live for revival. I want to live to see millions of souls. Come on, say souls, 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 come to Jesus. William Booth said, when I go to bed, souls. When I sleep, souls. When I wake up in the morning, souls. Who wants to live like William Booth? William Booth said, some of my best men are women. For the clown, Gabriella, who keeps on writing on our website saying, women shouldn't preach, women shouldn't teach. For the clown who might be watching, God bless that clown and help him to understand that William Booth said, some of my best men are women. Can I get an amen? amen. Probably the same silly man is married to a woman as well. Can I get an amen? Come on, all the women, lift up your hands and say, in the name of Jesus. God actually says revival, there's neither male nor female, neither Jew nor Greek, neither male nor female. For we are one in Christ Jesus. Good Lord Almighty. I mean, we've got gender issues with the LGBT, but we've got stupid conehead Christians who still can't get it right and want, and want to butcher women. And stick a bun on the poor woman's head and keep her in bondage. How many of you like my preaching? Amen. Well, I'm telling you, it's biblical. Amen. It's biblical. You know what? The reason why God uses so many women is because men are asleep. So secondly, they occur on consecrated individuals, male and female. Say male and female. Is it saying, oh, no, 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 it's always a man. No, it's not always a man. Catherine Coleman was a woman. Did you notice? Yeah. Amy Semple McPherson was a woman. Did you notice? Pastor Karina is a woman. Did you notice? I didn't marry a man. I married a woman. <laughs> Amen. Jackie Pullinger was a woman. Yeah. Heidi, Baker. Heidi Baker is still a woman. Yeah. Kim Walker is a woman. Yeah. Hands up if you're a woman. Holly May is a woman. 
But she's not any kind of woman. She's Wonder Woman from the Philippines. Holly May. Mary Faye is a woman. Amen. Just touch a person beside you. Do you, you, know, you know who you are? Don't, ha- don't have an identity issue. Number three. Revival has always brought, look, watch this, watch this. Revival has always brought a return to apostolic worship. Somebody say worship that doesn't focus on little ditties, you know, like some people call worship or praise and worship, they, you know, like the modern stuff with you know, pink waistcoats and lights. And go, Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Ooh, ooh, praise the Lord. Ooh, glory. No, apostolic worship, come on, say apostolic worship is polemic. It pierces the heavens. We sing about, say sing about, that means military. We sing about the blood of Jesus. We sing about the cross. We sing about eternity. We sing about the deep things of God. Amen? Am I preaching good? So revival brings a return to worship. Say worship, preaching of the word of God. Preaching to get Christians out of the church, into the world. Say every day, every day, every day, every day I'm in revival. Every day, every day, every day I worship God. Every day, every day I get out of bed, lazy head. I get out of bed, lazy head. Say every day, every day I read the word. Every day, every day I pray in tongues all day, every day, every day. Revival, revival. Amen. You see, apostolic preaching is different to the type of preaching today. I want to say seeker-sensitive preaching. I'm seeker-sensitive to get people saved, but seeker-sensitive preaching leaves out the blood, leaves out the cross, leaves out repentance, leaves out revival. Therefore, reject it. Reject it. So many strange doctrines in the church today. You know, a lot of preaching from the pulpit is psychology, self-help, humanism, opinions. Opinions are no good, Jesse. Come on, lift your hands. You need the Word of God. Come on, lift your hands. You need the Word of God. You need the blood of Jesus. If you're not in revival, you're dying. Touch a neighbor and say, if you're not in a revival, you're dying. You're not abiding in the vine. You're dying on the vine. Amen. You still love me? See, number four. Revival will will bring a a restoration, say restoration, of the song, of worship, of the word, of Holy Ghost evangelism. Revival will begin to touch every sector of society. It will raise up artists, raise up preachers, raise up singers, raise up designers. Revival brings prosperity, folks. Can I get an amen? Number five, revival always produces the turning away of idolatry and the turning to the Lord. Now, lift your hands around about now. Here's the problem. The, the reason there's no revival is because churches and Christians have, have got another spirit, and we've got to get rid of it. Lift your hands right now and say that worldly spirit. You see, the worldly spirit today is what's invading the church, invading the pulpit. And so with the worldly spirit comes, well, I need my family time. I need my time. I need to go on holiday in Hawaii. The worldly spirit wants to watch entertainment programs. And so instead of, instead of praying on a Saturday night, watching X Factor in Coronation Street and Saturday Night Takeaway. And the worldly spirit is more concerned about the things of the world than the things of the kingdom. And we're wasting our time. And the worldly spirit is worried about their pension and retiring. Of course, none of us here have got that problem. Liars. Come on, lift your hands now and say, Father, in the name of Jesus. You know, who am I going to marry? What am I going to do? When I'm a big girl and grow up, what will I be? Will I be single? Or will I? My mama said to me, Kay, so why, so why, whatever will be, will be. Now, I'm not a girl. I'm just saying the song, Doris Day. Now, come on, everybody, lift your hands and say, in the name of Jesus. Get me set free from a worldly spirit. I guarantee you, say after me, say it's in the house or on the way. Say it's in the house or on the way. Say it's in the house or on the way. If you're meant to be married, God will bring you a husband in the house or on the way. If you're meant to get a wife, it'll be in the house or on the way. You don't need to go on the internet. You don't need to go on a dating site. It'll be in the house or on the way. Because revival takes care of all those things. 
But if you've got a worldly spirit, you cannot have a revival spirit. And if you're a pastor with a, with, with a worldly spirit, you will not have a revival spirit. And all your preaching will be centered around that. Oh, hallelujah. I tell you what, I'm rattling some cages today. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of you want the revival? And here's the revival that God is bringing. The destruction of idolatry. Lift your hands. You see, idolatry is where you worship something above Christ. Maybe your car. Maybe your house. Maybe your career. Maybe your body. You know, I mean, we see, we see folks in the gym. I'll tell you what. They are so in love with their body. You know, they sing that song. If I said I had a beautiful body, would you hold it? You know, you know what I mean? It's like, get away. What is wrong with you? Amen. You know, come on, lift your hands. You know what? Whatever your idol is, it's time to kill it. You know what? Jesus is my idol. Jesus is my desire. Jesus is my fire. Oh, relight my fire. You know, I'm not taking take that. I'm talking Holy Ghost. Come on. Relight my fire. Jesus Christ is my only desire. Relight my fire with revival. Woo! Yeah. Randy doesn't even know what the song is. Come on, lift your hands and say, relight the fire. Give me the Holy Ghost fire of revival in Jesus' name. Now, here's what happens when you get that heart of the alabaster box. Number one, you will separate your life from sin and worldliness to live in holiness. Can I get an amen? The Bible says in Hebrews 12, 14, without holiness, you won't even see the Lord. You won't even see the Lord. You know what, on a lot of worship, praise, platform, there's no holiness. That's what, you can't even, it's performance. You can't see the Lord. Without holiness, you were, and there's a lot of folks, oh, holiness, oh, what, what is that? Do you have to walk around like this? That's not holiness, that's weirdness. You know, some people go, what? What are you doing? I'm trying to be holy. No, you're just being weird. Come on, lift your hand. Holiness is so full of Jesus, there ain't no room to be full of something else. You know, a lot of the religious nutcases that I've met, that, you know what, they ain't full of Jesus, they certainly full of something else, but it ain't Jesus. Come on, lift your hands and say, I want to be full of Jesus. If you're full of Jesus, you'll be holy. You don't, you don't try to be holy you just let the Holy Spirit fill you with a revival anointing and you, you'll be holy. You know, what, what do you think? Is, 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 is all of this about you do it? No, it's about just come on, just lift your hands and say, oh, God, I receive it. Lord, I want it. Lord, I desire it. What do you, you know, then God will do it. God will do it. You know what? I wasn't a holy man. Are you kidding me? I wasn't a holy man when God found me. I was the most ho- unholy man you could ever meet. You know what the Apostle Paul said? He said, I was the chief of sinners. You know, maybe that's why God used him more than anybody else, because he had a revelation of what he really was. He said, I'm the chief of sinners. So God uses him with power and makes him holy. Come on, lift your hands now and say, God, I receive an anointing of holiness to clean up my life of worldliness. Clean it up of worldliness. Number two, when you get a revival heart of fire, it will produce a restoration of your life in three areas. Everybody say time, treasure, talent. Time, you'll stop wasting time. You'll, you, you'll be, you know, people say, what about Smith Wigglesworth? How often did he pray? Smith Wigglesworth didn't live like a weirdo. This is what he said. He said, I'll never let 15 minutes go without praying in tongues. You see that? Your time. You won't be wasting time. But can I, can I say by the same token, you won't be weird about your time either, you know, like wandering around like that. You know, while you're living, while you're working, you're redeeming the time. So you'll be praying in tongues. Oh, shut up, you know, people say, how often do I pray? I pray all day. Every moment. Even watching football, I'm praying. Watching boxing, I'm praying. When I'm in the shower, I'm praying and singing. I get all my inspiration in there. While I'm gardening, I'm praying. While I'm driving, I'm praying. Amen. 
Come on now, lift your hands. Start to get it into your spirit. That's what Paul did. Paul said, I pray in tongues more than you all. I guarantee Paul could still say that today. But how many of you really believe this is a supernatural book with supernatural truth, with supernatural revelation about a supernatural God who gave us nine gifts of the Spirit and praying in tongues is one of them. And so we don't use it. And we think it's a little charismatic little toy that we can, oh, on Sunday, like, oh, shakara babonde, I'll have a Hyundai. She came on a Hyundai, Kawasaki, Kawasaki. Sweet and sour chicken. Come on now, everybody lift up your Bible and say, this is the word of God. Say the baptism in the Holy Ghost is for revival. The nine gifts of the Spirit, come on, word of wisdom, tongues, interpretation, faith, miracles, healings, tongues, praying in tongues, is the doorway to the supernatural. Lord, teach me to do it more and more and more. Why? Because it'll switch off your natural thinking. Reasoning. Come on, reasoning. The British, this is their disease. Everything is reasoning. Well, it's got to be reasonable. A reasonable faith. Oh, look, a reasonable time to go to church and a reasonable time to leave church. A reasonable sort of a faith. Who knows what I'm talking about? British people are reasonable. Everything's got to be, it's got to be reasonable. Well, God is unreasonable. Come on, lift your hands right now. Say, God, God is not, God doesn't work by reason, holy man. He works by supernatural. That's why God, I mean, who can see the wisdom of God that with us silly little human creatures here who want to figure everything out, that he says, you know what, just to shut them up, I'm going to b- let them get baptized with the Holy Ghost and pray in tongues just to keep them quiet so that they'll learn the power of God, not through a natural means but by a supernatural. Can you see it? If I was God, I think, oh, that was really smart. Because if God hadn't have done that, guess what? All of us down here would be, yes, well, I can figure that out. Yes, thank you so much. Mm-hmm. Yes, uh, two plus two is four. Okay, got that sorted. Yes, Hebrew, Greek. Yes, a little bit of hermeneutics. Thank you so much. A little bit of eschatology. Oh, yes, the El Synoptic Gospel. A little bit of Hebrew and Greek. Thank you so much. Yes. John Cleese doesn't exist in Scripture. Amen. I like John Cleese. He's funny. But he doesn't exist in Scripture. Everybody lift your hands and say, Father, I need a Holy Ghost anointing to return me to the deep things of God, which is revival, to pray in the Holy Ghost. Listen, when revival comes, idols are broken. And here's what happens. People start giving their money again. Can I get an amen? They start bringing their money to the apostles' feet. I've had this happen to me several times. I've had it happen. I've preached and I've had people literally come up and throw money at my feet. When it, when, when it happened at first, I was a little bit taken back because I guess there must have been a little bit, a little bit of British in me, Simon. I was like, oh my gosh, here we go. A little bit of money at the feet sort of thing. I was like, oh dear. You know, I mean, we're, you know, because how many of you know, wherever we grew up, it affects us. Culture, say culture, traditions affects us, but they are demonic. And you know what? I, I thought, no, don't stop it. You never know. Jess might come running up and throw money at me today. I'm just kidding. Amen? No, I'll tell you what. They started throwing money at me. Praise the Lord. You off somewhere? Hallelujah. (laughs) Amen? Come on, everybody. Lift your hands and say, revival changes everything. Revival, say it changes my money, changes my time, changes my talent. Listen, the next thing, number three, what happens with a revival is, that say, the restoration. Come on, play something now. Say the restoration of miracles, joy, gladness, prosperity, peace to the city, uh, singing, the song. You know, when there's no revivals, there's just dead songs, dead old religious songs. But when there's revival, come on, say revival, there are songs of faith that begin to affect everybody. Number four, revivals bring a change In the nation. I believe it releases finances. Finances. It releases wealth. It changes. Everybody lift your hands and pray with me. Say it changes the existing order. See here's here's what happens in cities. Denominations. Culture. Traditions. Religious spirit and worldly spirit dominate. 
Now, in Watford, that's exactly what's happening. Who can see that? In Watford, there's 50, 60 churches. Here's what happens. Denominations or abominations, as we've been taught today. Culture, which becomes greater than kingdom. Tradition, which means, oh, well, that's what we always do. That's what we always do. The seven most famous words of a dying church are these. We've never done it this way before. That's why you're dying. Amen. Play, Celeste. Play. Religious spirit, which isn't Holy Spirit. You know, some of you can develop a religious spirit. You've not got the Holy Spirit. You've got a religious spirit. I tell you, as you go into nations where the, where the culture is so strong, like India, they can develop a religious spirit. Philippines, religious spirit. China, religious spirit. Britain has a religious spirit. The British Christians, what they really want on Sunday, I'll tell you what I want, what I really, really want. I'll tell you what I want, what I really, really want. I want a, I want a, I want a, I want a pastor that I can cuddle and squeeze and turn off. I want a nice little religious service, no more than 40 minutes. I want two songs, one quick, one slow. I want announcements done in two minutes. I want to talk and then I want to go home. No challenge. Have you know, that's a religious spirit. That's a religious spirit. See, a talk is a waste of time. Talk is cheap. And it ain't nothing to do with BT. What you want is what the Bible says. What you want is somebody who's anointed by God, an evangelist, prophet, pastor, teacher, apostle, to preach the word. Can I get an amen? I'll tell you what I want, what I really, really want. I want, I want, I want, I want, I want. No, we don't. Let's lift our hands and say, I'll tell you what I want, what I really, really want. What I want is denominationalism stopped, culture squashed, traditions in the bin, religious spirit behind me, and worldliness not even affecting me. Come on, lift your hands, say, holiness unto the Lord, holiness unto the Lord, holiness unto the Lord. See, when revival comes... God will restore. Come on, lift your hand. Say, God will restore apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers. God will restore the church to what it should be so that it will shine to the lost. It will shine to the world. I tell you, when revival comes, God will cause there to be an apostolic outpouring of the Holy Ghost over the nations of the earth. Can I get an amen? 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 And that anointing is what will change Watford, change you and me, will change OCC. As long as we're alive, OCC will never be the same again. Amen? And I believe that if you're in faith, and we're in faith, we can walk into that today. Let's bow our heads and pray. And for those watching on the broadcast, and you say today, in the name of Jesus, first thing is this. If you don't know the Lord, you've got to pray to receive the Lord. Say, Father, I open my heart to Jesus. I repent of sin, every sin. And I invite Christ into my heart to set me free and come and live within in Jesus' name. If you prayed that, get in touch with us. Secondly, you're here today, and I want to tell you there's a revival anointing here right now to heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out devils. That's why I've stopped preaching, so we can demonstrate to you exactly what God can do. And if you're in this service right now, you say, Pastor Steve, I want the revival anointing. First of all, lift your hand. Let me see. Amen. 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 Hands all over. Secondly, if you're in the service today and you need a specific miracle in your body, you need a miracle. Just lift your hands right now. I'm going to pray for you. Right, all those who need a miracle in their body, come up here now. I'm going to pray for you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And I believe we're going to get it right now in Jesus' name. Geraldine, you come first. 